During the recent Nintendo Direct, Iwata announced a brand new Yoshi's Island game for the Nintendo 3DS. And you know what that means, it's time to take a look at the footage and see what secrets it might be hiding. Okay, so right off the bat, we can tell the game bears a strong resemblance to past Yoshi's Island games. I mean, you have Yoshi, Baby Mario, and tons of returning elements. And yet, it actually looks pretty different from both of the previous Yoshi's Island games in terms of the art style. It has less of that classic hand-drawn look and more of a textured appearance, almost as if the characters are made of clay. But what if I told you that even this look appears to be inspired by the original Yoshi's Island? If we take a look at that game's opening cutscene, we can see a very similar looking three-dimensional Yoshi, right down to the oversized shoes. It's an interesting style to apply to the whole game, but it's pretty cool that it's still rooted in an element of the original. Speaking of the original game, almost everything shown so far is lifted directly from it. Let's take the enemies for example, which include Shy Guys, Fly Guys, Crazy Daisies, Maces, Piranha Plants, Grinders, Cheap Cheeps, Gusties, and if we freeze this clip right before it changes, we can see the Lantern Ghosts return too. And it appears that they all behave in the exact same ways, right down to the Shy Guys who stop and switch directions at random. But that's enough about the bad guys, what about the good guys? Let's start off by taking a look at Yoshi. In the gameplay, we can see that he still gets around pretty much in the same way as before. He flutter jumps, ground pounds, and throws eggs using the exact same targeting system as before. And it looks like he'll still acquire eggs in the same way too, such as by swallowing enemies, grabbing them from eggplants, or from egg blocks. That is, at least, that the giant egg block here is any indication, which actually gives Yoshi a gigantic egg. And this is one of the few things shown off besides the art style that's actually new. Now when you throw one of these giant eggs, the camera actually follows it as it tears through almost everything in its path, except for parts of the environment itself, such as when it bounces off this large rock here. And you might have noticed that the egg changed color after that happened, which is exactly how the smaller eggs functioned in the previous games. In the original Yoshi's Island, eggs could ricochet up to three times before they exploded, and their color provided an indicator of how many rebounds they had left. So a green egg could rebound three times, yellow two, and a red egg only once more before it went bye-bye. And beyond that, the egg's color also dictated what popped out after it connected with something, such as an enemy. A green egg revealed nothing, while a yellow one dropped a coin, and a red one rewarded you with two stars. Unless your star counter was full, in which case it dropped coins instead. Basically, the game rewarded you for making tricky ricochet shots. So we're guessing that the same mechanic might also return in Yoshi's Island 3DS. Do we wonder this also applies to the giant egg? Or maybe it actually drops even bigger rewards? I mean, that is one huge egg. It's got more than enough room. Now speaking of things that change color, we notice that the green Yoshi is the only one that appears in all of the gameplay scenes. Which is a bit odd, considering that in the past games you would switch to a different colored Yoshi after every level. So that could mean one of a few things. One, that green Yoshi might actually be the only Yoshi in the game. Or two, it's possible that all the levels shown so far just happen to be green Yoshi levels. Or three, maybe the game takes a page from Yoshi's Story's playbook and allows you to select the color of Yoshi you'd like to play as in every level. In which case, the guy who recorded this footage must really love that green dino. And finally, it could just be that the game's unfinished and they haven't yet fully implemented the other color Yoshis, though that really is a trivial change. Similarly, Baby Mario is the only baby we see riding Yoshi, which suggests the baby swapping mechanic in Yoshi's Island DS might not return. And strangely, we don't really see how Baby Mario works in this game at all. But it's probably not a stretch to assume it's exactly the same as before, particularly as we do briefly see the countdown timer appear in a few scenes. Now in case you haven't played the previous games, the countdown timer appeared whenever Yoshi got hit, which would cause Baby Mario to float around in a bubble and cry like a baby. <coughs> Annoying, isn't it? And if you didn't manage to retrieve Baby Mario before the timer reached zero, it would cost you a life. So it seems that will be the case here too. Furthermore, in past games, that counter would automatically refill back up to 10, at which point it would turn yellow. And since it's yellow here, we're guessing that element returns too. And actually, there are a few other things in the gameplay footage that not only return too, but also reveal a little bit more about the game than might seem at first glance. For one, we can see several collectible flowers throughout the video, and Yoshi even grabs one at some point. If they function like before, that likely means there's five per level, and each one increases your chance of earning a bonus game at the end of the level. Speaking of collectibles, it appears that the red coins will be returning as well, such as the one being held by this fly guy here. But it looks like they'll still be hidden among regular gold coins as well, as shown here. And like the flowers, if it's anything like the previous games, there will be 20 of them hidden in every level. And as you might also recall, if you wanted to complete every level 100% in the original game, that meant you needed to find all 5 flowers, all 20 red coins, as well as finish the level 30 seconds on the Baby Mario timer, which you accomplish by finding at least 20 of those low star dudes or passing through checkpoints for a 10 second bonus. And while we're on the topic of levels, let's take a look at a few of the ones that they showed off. Of course we have the usual planes, which look similar to World 1 in the original Yoshi's Island including the flowers in the foreground and the red and green hills in the background. Wait just a second! 
It doesn't just look similar, it looks identical to level 1-1 from Yoshi's Island. Check it out. You've got the shy guy on the platform, the crazy daisy just below, right next to a tilted rock, which is right before a piranha plant. Holy cow! You might actually be replaying through the same stage. And if you take a look at the later scene, we can see a later part of that same level, only with the addition of a platform between the two rocks here. Is this just a one-off, or are there other levels from the past games that you might replay through as well? Now beyond the plains, we can see a few other level themes, like caves, jungles, and a couple of different forests. Now, the two previous Yoshi's Island games had 6 and 5 worlds respectively, so if the 3DS one follows suit, we might already know what most of them are. Now, because the cave levels are likely interspersed throughout the game like before, there are at least 4 worlds that we might know the themes of. The plains, the jungle, and the two forests, assuming that none of them appear in the same world, of course. And we're going to take a wild stab in the dark and say the final world will probably contain lava. Which leaves potentially one world left. If we go by the remaining themes of the past games, it could be based on snowy mountains, cliff tops, or maybe a beach. Okay, we're just about done here, but as usual, there's just a few final details left. First up, there's still just a few returning items that I wanted to point out, such as the spring balls that allow you to reach higher areas, one-way doors, and the question mark clouds that either reveal items or causes bridges to appear, as is the case here. And finally, did you notice the coins actually have Yoshi's face on them? This is actually a detail that was in the previous games too, but it's much easier to see now with a higher resolution. And with that, we're done covering everything we could dig up on Yoshi's Island for the 3DS. As usual, let us know if you missed anything by posting in the comments. Thanks for watching, and make sure to keep an eye on GameExplained.com for more on Yoshi's Island 3DS and other things gaming too.